I'm just going to say a quick word of prayer and then we'll, we'll hop on in here. Holy Spirit, uh, we're just so thankful for a chance to uh, come and gather and worship together. Um, Lord, we pray that you would give us revelation and illumination uh, as we explore this topic of intimacy and, and closeness. Um, God, would you bring things to mind uh, so this, this wouldn't just be a time of, of hearing uh, and receiving, but God, that you would shape us um, through what you want to say to us. So God, we love you, and we just offer this time up to you. Amen. So, we're going to be starting things off here. Uh, this is just kind of like an introductory week um, to what we'll be talking about for the next semester or so. Um, but, we're going to start us off with a little story. So last year, Liz uh, and I, we were <laughs> surprised. <laughs> Uh, Liz and I were playing soccer on Old Main Lawn, and um, we, we met this guy named Ross, um, and he was a passionate guy, really excitable, uh, and really enjoyed engineering and energy efficiency in particular. Um, so he graduated this last spring, and he moved to Detroit, uh, and is now working for a company there, and I asked him like what the company does, kind of what its focus is. Uh, he explained that what they do is, is they partner with, it's like a, a partnership between the utility companies and um, like the government. And so they'll, they'll go into housing and they'll test the energy efficiency of the housings. And then what they'll do is they'll often replace things like the insulation, um, heating and cooling systems, lights, etc. And in particular for low income housing, uh, these programs are, are either steeply discounted or in many cases are free. And so I, I told him I thought that was an amazing opportunity um, and sounded super rewarding, but then he asked me this question. So I'll, I'll put it before you guys. <laughs> uh, if someone came knocking on your door and said, hey, I wanna come in and test your home for its energy efficiency and potentially replace some of the systems in it, give you better insulation so that you can save money and live more comfortably. Oh, and by the way, this is free. What would you say? Well, he said, for many people, they, they believe there's no way that it could actually be like as good of an offer as, as he says it is. Uh, so they think it's too good to be true. Um, Flip the downer. Oh, there we go. <laughs> not, not super intuitive, but we'll go with it. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, people pass on this opportunity all the time. And that's one of the biggest kind of barriers that they have in doing what they're, they're doing. Um, and so, I don't know, in, in many ways, the skepticism is needed. Um, you know, every day we get emails uh, with scam offers. <laughs> um, you know, we get tagged in posts for one-day sales for Louis Vuitton, Ray-Ban. Uh, you know, people say that, like, there's these pills that will help us lose weight, increase our focus, uh, and our athletic ability. And, I mean, even myself personally, like, I... I purchased a used car and found out months later that like the miles on it were lied about. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so every day we're, we're bombarded with between 4,000 and 10,000 different advertisements. Um, I mean, politicians, they, they say, you know, if I get elected in, then everything's gonna be okay, but if my competitor gets elected in, like the whole country is gonna melt down. And so we're constantly receiving these conflicting messages uh, and bold claims and out of necessity, we've needed to develop filters to quickly sift through just the incredible amount of information that we're receiving. However, these filters are not always perfectly accurate. So over the next 10 weeks, we're gonna be looking at the concept of intimacy. And we'll be doing it through three different lenses. Intimacy with God, others, and ourselves. So what is intimacy? Well, we're going 
going to be defining it as giving access to the inmost parts of who you are. And see, we want to, we want to take a look at this less like an end goal uh, and more like a posture of vulnerability and openness. Um, and, and believing that God and others and ourselves can be trusted with those inmost parts of who we are. And, and that's a process. Like that's not just a, a one day fix. That's a, an ever moving target in a lot of ways. Um, but as we step into it, I think the Lord will, will move. As I was kind of preparing for this, the, the question came to mind of like, have you ever allowed someone to fully know you? Mm. Like really know you, you know? I think like Elena probably is the closest to that for me, but like, I'm sure there's still parts of me that I'm like, eh, maybe not yet. Like, I don't know. Well, oh, God, for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm. And I think comedian and modern day philosopher Chris Rock <laughs> um, he has this statement where he says, when you meet somebody for the first time, you're not meeting them, you're meeting their representative. Um, and I think that's a profound observation. And I think for many of us, we never re let that representative fully go away. Mm. Like we, we might diminish it, we might kind of let bits and pieces of ourselves shine through. But there might be some percentage that we kind of keep behind that representative wall. So we're not, we're not trying to look at an all encompassing view of intimacy in this series. Um, that would literally take a lifetime, <laughs> but what we are going to do is we're going to look at what we can and trust that the Holy spirit will speak to us. Uh, and to guide us as we explore this more. You see, when it comes to Jesus, he doesn't just like us and love us. He actually, like, fuses himself to us. So when we go through things, he's not at a distance. Like, he's, he's in it with us in the moment, good and bad, like, beautiful and ugly. <laughs> so he's not protecting himself from what we're experiencing. But one of the problems we can run into is just like Ross's job, what God offers can sometimes seem too good to be true. Mm. Now, there's a saying, well, there's a couple of sayings. One is, <laughs> if, it, if it seems too good to be true, it's it, it is. Yeah, it probably is. is. Like, <laughs> we, we know that. Uh, and there's this other saying that the grass is always greener mm -hmm. on the other side of the fence. Mm -hmm. And. Is that phrase everyone's heard before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, what this phrase implies is that what you don't have often looks better than what you do have. But if you were to go up and inspect it, whether it's a you know a literal grass <laughs> job, lifestyle, whatever you're envying, that you discover that once you got closer to it, it's it's not as good as it looked mm -hmm. when you were kind of standing back from it. So what we're asking in this series is what if the grass is actually greener? What if we were to lay aside the skepticism of our heart and discover that the intimacy that God invites us into is every bit as great and important as he makes it out to be? What if the grass is actually greener and if the intimacy that God offers is actually as great as he says it is? And the good news is that we do have access to this deep level of intimacy that God describes in John 17. So I'm going to put it up here on the screen. Um, this is the Passion Translation because this is a super wordy passage. <laughs> <laughs> and this one kind of clarified it the most. So if you're unfamiliar with the wording, that's why. Um, so he says, and I asked not only uh, for these disciples, but also for all those who will one day believe in me through their message. So this is Jesus praying to God the Father. Um, and he's praying for the people that he's like literally walking with on the earth, but he's also praying for us directly. Mm -hmm. So anyone that will one day believe. 
Since I pray for them all to be joined together as one, even as you and I, Father, are joined together as one. I pray for them to become one with us so that the world will recognize that you sent me. So the same level of closeness that Jesus and God share with one another Mm -hmm. is the same closeness that Jesus is praying over like us with each other and us with him. Mm -hmm. Um, And the result of this will be that the world sees and knows that this kind of human community that's united across traditional gender barriers, race, customs, and class is only the action of of God so that the world may see and believe. For the very glory you've given me, I have given them so that they will be joined together as one and experience the same unity that we enjoy. Again, I mean, he's really hammering all (laughs) night. (laughs) Unity, unity, unity. You live fully in me, and now I live fully in them, so that they will experience perfect unity. And the world will be convinced that you have sent me, for they will see that you love each one of them with the same passionate love you have for me. Uh, So again, this like Jesus is not just casually at a distance caring about us. He has sent his Holy Spirit to fuse to us. Um so that we can have the same level of unity and intimacy. Father, I ask that you allow everyone that you have given to me to be with me where I am. Then they will see my full glory, the very splendor you have placed upon me, because you have loved me even before the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. So why is this important? Well, I don't know, as I was reading this section of scripture, um, put my water on. as I was reading this passage of scripture, um, I started wondering if maybe I've had a watered down view of what unity is. Um, and what I mean by that is like, traditionally I've thought of unity is like, okay, I can be united with someone, but that doesn't mean I have to be best friends with them. Like, Maybe I don't even care about them that much. <laughs> uh, but I'm not like actively trying to tear them down. Like I'm trying to find common ground with them. Um, and I don't know, I think I've often equated unity to, to a basic level of like tolerance, maybe. Mm-hmm. But Jesus is comparing the relationship that he and the Father have. And that's the unity, like that's the bar for unity that he's putting in front of us and desires for us. And that's an incredibly high bar. (laughs) Because this intimacy, as it says in verse 24, existed before the beginning of time. Mm. Um, So we believe that the triune God, God the Father, Son, and Spirit existed, has always existed. There was never a point where he was not there. Mm. and this, this intimacy that they shared with one another is a, a foundational characteristic of who God is, of this closeness that they have. Um, and so us as being created to be image bearers of God in order to fully reflect him and to live into the life of flourishing that he's designed for us, like we have to engage in this closeness and this unity, both with him others, and ourselves. Mm-hmm. Intimacy is not just knowing things about someone. Um, that could be maybe defined as openness. Uh, it's, not, it's not static, and it doesn't necessarily make things easier either. either. I think if that's kind of the goal of intimacy, mm-hmm. um, that might frustrate us a little bit, so I'll just kind of put that out in front of us. <laughs> uh, but true intimacy shapes us through relationship. We'll look at an example of that here in Matthew 26. So this intimacy shaping us through relationship. So in Matthew 26, um, this is verses 38 and 39. Jesus knows that he's about to be captured and and crucified. Um, 
And so he's brought Peter, James, and John to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. Uh, and, and again, like, this isn't a surprise to Jesus. Like, a large part of his purpose for coming, <laughs> like, actually God coming to become man, was to die for our sake. Um, it's not a surprise. But in verse 38, it picks up and he says, He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little further and bowed his face to the ground, praying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. You see, in intimacy, you will be changed because you're allowing someone else to have a voice and influence in your life in your thoughts and your actions. And so, I don't know, to kind of illustrate this point, like most of y'all know I, I like doing photography. Um, like this difference between openness and intimacy would be like me showing you one of my pictures, like that's openness. Like I'm sharing something that I care about, like I'm, here it is. Um, and so you know something about me or what I've done, but it's also one way. Like, I'm, I'm just, here it is. Intimacy is me asking your input on how I could have improved upon a picture I took. See, I'm giving you a voice and opening myself up to potential criticism on something I deeply care about and have worked hard on. Mm -hmm. And going back to this last passage, for Jesus, openness was telling God, the Father, that he did not want to endure the cross, but intimacy was him saying, yet I want your will to be done, not mine. So he's expressing, <laughs> this is where I am, but the relationship that he had with the Father shaped his action to even do things that he didn't want to do, um, because he knew it would be best. And so Jesus' choice to go to the cross was shaped by his relationship with God the Father. Um, he, like any of us, he didn't want to go through the suffering that he was about to endure. Um, but he willingly submitted to the Father because of the closeness that they shared. His sacrifice and resurrection is what makes the unprecedented access we have to God through him possible. And so his closeness was shaped to the point of obedience, even, even it, by dying. Um, again, kind of going back to that point of intimacy doesn't necessarily equal ease. <laughs> this wasn't an easy thing. But another way to look at it would be that like, Jesus declared that intimacy was equally valuable to his own life. He so deeply desired to have the same closeness with us and desired us to have the same closeness that he had been experiencing with God the Father, that he literally died so that it could happen. A spoiler alert, he did. He came back from the dead. He <laughs> stayed dead. But I really like this, this quote by Rich Lotus. Um, he says, The cross is not a bridge to get us to God. It is a sledgehammer that breaks down hostile walls that separate us. And, and that's the, the kind of core central message of the cross, is it breaks down these barriers that once separated us from God, that once created division between us and others. Um, and that's good news. So just to, to kind of recap things here. So intimacy is giving access to the inmost parts of who you are. We have a learned skepticism towards things that appear too good to be true, but the intimacy that God offers us is actually as good as he says it is. Mm -hmm. Again, worthy of, of dying for it. And then true intimacy shapes us through relationship. So one of the things that we kind of value here at Storehouse is we don't want this just to be a time of kind of receiving something, which there's nothing wrong with that. 
Um, but we, we really want to kind of take it and discuss it with one another and see like what the Lord might want to say to us either collectively or individually. Um, and so we're just going to maybe kind of group off into two clumps here. Maybe, how many people? Yeah. Y'all? <laughs> yes. Um, and we'll just be looking at these two questions. So when you think of intimacy with God, others, and self, which one of those seems most challenging to you? And which seems like the easiest? Mm. Or, or maybe the one that you're most naturally inclined towards? Um, and then is there any skepticism or fear that you have in regard to this closeness that we're, we're describing? So kind of this idea of like, you know, what if the grass is actually greener? Like, is there something that your brain kind of goes to that's like, yeah, maybe, maybe it's not as great and here's why. Mm -hmm. um, and so we just want to kind of bring that to the surface and, and allow God access to, to maybe shape those thoughts and feelings that we have. Um, so we'll keep this up here and we'll, uh, we'll talk until sometime. Thank <laughs> you.